शतान प्रसन्ना Hare Krishna dear devotees and welcome to today's session how are you doing i pray that all is well with you and your families at this time so today we're moving on to the second part of this letter this letter to jai gopala prabhu so it was a very interesting one yesterday we prabhupad was saying uh, narayana parasarve that the devotee can go to any situation hell or heaven in order to perform devotional service and the best example of that was shila prabhupad who went from a complete vedic culture to the bauri in, in america new york so you can just understand what extremes that was just to perform devotional service so today we're moving on to another theme and let's see so we catch the letter from this paragraph starting regarding volsa marrying for the time being they can be married by the civil court without delay both the husband and wife may be allowed to associate with you and after a few days if you recommend for initiation then you can send their beads and they will be initiated by post so we have a situation where there's this couple who want to join and want to be initiated but for right now they're not even married <laughs> you must remember at that time shila prabhupad was dealing with very very young devotees 20s most of them were in the 20s early 20s so so that there's no promiscuous activity prabhupad would say you must get married if you're going to stay together you must get married so he was not against the marriage system actually vedic culture is not against the marriage system uh it promotes uh vedic marriage hmm? vivaha samskara it promotes vedic marriage but it also promotes brahmacharya but what prabhupad was offering unique was brahmacharini ashram that was never done before uh single ladies were not allowed to stay in the ashram hmm? uh but prabhupad introduced that because who will give them shelter otherwise so it's a it's a concept that not even uh, uh bhakti siddhanta offered but shila prabhupad offered it because he knew this was needed at this time so just uh just a few weeks ago actually uh was jayapataka swami maharaj his 50th sanyas anniversary they celebrated it online 50 years of being a sanyasi he he took sanyas at the age of 20 can you imagine some of us joined at the age of i joined when i was 21 some of us joined at a young age but he took sanyas at that age we see also his holiness bhakti charu swami maharaj prabhupad gave him first initiation second initiation and sanyas all at one time so they were definitely special devotees uh in the case of chaitanya mahaprabhu uh in his past times he didn't actually want to take sanyas but he took sanyas because of the social custom at that time just so that people because at that time if you see a sanyasi anybody would bow down so by doing that they will get benefit so he said if that helps them to uh, come closer to krishna then i'll take sanyas so he did that uh, shila prabhupad we narrated the story of shila prabhupad how uh, bhakti siddhanta was coming in his dream and saying take sanyas and prabhupad was becoming mortified because he was still married so the idea is that the vedic culture is not against marriage although three of the ashrams propagate celibacy hmm? brahmachari vanaprastha and sanyas so only the grihastha ashram allows for uh, license for sense gratification prabhupad would call it that but it's needed for propagation of devotees how else a devotee is going to come into this world 
Mm? So it's a very natural part of life, but so is brahmachari. It's also, brahmacharya is also a very natural part of life. If one has the proper association, as one is uh, dedicated, it's not a matter of determination, it's a matter of dedication. If one is dedicated to serving the spiritual master his whole life through, then if that ashram is more suited for that purpose, then he should take, stay as a brahmachari. But in his dedication, if he feels I also have my personal needs, then it's a very natural process to get married. And in doing that, one can then advance properly and naturally in Krishna consciousness. And I think that's what Prabhupada's point is here. So all these young boys and girls, they want to get initiated, but uh, they are also not married yet. So Prabhupada would regard them as all his sons and daughters, especially the girls. He would regard them as, these are my daughters. We saw many uh, uh, males where Prabhupada was addressing them as my daughters, hmm? very affectionately like a father. So Prabhupada is going on to tell uh, Jai Gopal Prabhu here, that uh, in this case where these devotees were thinking of getting initiated, but they're not married yet, we can't just become a marriage parlor <laughs> for people. We, we are serious about practicing spiritual life, and if those are serious, then we'll monitor them. First, let them get married. First you get married, then we'll monitor you, train you how to perform Vaidhi Bhakti, devotional service. And then from that, if we see that there is seriousness there, then definitely they can get initiated by, by post. Prabhupada says, send me their beads and I'll chant on their beads. And by doing that, then they can get initiated. Prabhupada goes on to say, at that time, you can perform our regular wedding ceremony as usual. So Prabhupada has also trained these devotees to do this vivaha samskara how to do the yagya, how they do that whole procedure of, uh, yeah, these days they want to do quick wedding. Ho, ho, ho. Quick wedding means quick divorce also. <laughs> you do anything quickly, then that means also the result will be short-lived as well. Why do you think these weddings were drawn out weddings? Uh, remember in, in, uh, when I was growing up, ooh, wedding means minimum two hours. You've got to be sitting there. You're just thinking when that halwa will come, you know. <laughs> and then you, they serving that hot, hot biryani and the dal. And that time the halwa guy is coming down the line. Now where to put it? So quickly you either make place in the stomach or make place on the plate. <laughs> So quickly, you make some place there quickly because if this fellow comes by with a halawa, you don't put anything, you won't get anything. You'll just go past, you finished out, no chance of him coming back. <laughs> uh, so you just make some place quickly and let him, ah, Prabhu, ah, you can put second, no bar, no problem. But that they will come a little bit, you know, that wedding halawa, oof, very, very tasty. Uh, the butter is just dripping on that. Ooh. Now we have to, can't get even a little bit because of the lockdown, huh? Now, I was sharing with you the other day, I was we're discussing with one devotee that uh, everything we can get online, but prasadam, no. <laughs> no prasadam, we're missing the Sunday feasts. So, just like that. Uh, so, Prabhupada is saying, no, do the procedures. Do whatever is required there, as we usually do. And in that way, the commitment is taken between the husband and wife. Why is that? Because very soon after the, uh, this wedding, then, uh, you know, that's when the real challenge starts. How to coordinate, how to cooperate with each other, how to work with each other. So if that samskara is not taken and the commitment is not taken in an elaborate way, then the bond also won't be there because very soon, the, you know, the romantic side of it fades out, you know. <laughs> and then what you left is with the reality. And then you say, what did I get into now? And it's too late for that. So what to help you through that phase, to, the, to coordinate and to help through that difficult time, 
then you remember, hey, you know, I sat two hours in that samskara, you know, I sat two hours, I did this, how much my parents paid for the wedding and all those people sacrificed their time to come to the wedding. Can't just throw it away, just like over one argument, you know. So, ISKCON doesn't have a good track record and that's the fact, we don't have a good track record of marriage, so we should think about it deeply and especially if we're practicing the philosophy, we should understand the depth of what is required in a marriage and learn it from our seniors. They have, look at how they've done. My parents, uh, very soon they're going to be 50 years married. So 50 years of marriage, so how do they do it? And there are many other senior devotees in the community as well. So it's important that uh, we learn from them, how do they work through the difficult times? And the Prabhupada is advocating here, you can only do it if Krishna is in the center. Hmm? Prabhupada goes on to say, Uninitiated couples cannot be married by us. We shall not take the responsibility of ordinary marriage maker. So Prabhupada is saying, we're not going to just perform marriages for people here. We are a devotional movement. We are a movement based on Krishna consciousness. So if they're serious, yes, we can commit, but they must show that they're serious to practice bhakti. Prabhupada goes on to say, our practice is to help devotees for advancing in Krishna consciousness. So that's what the goal is. Prabhupada is saying, this is the whole point of all of this. We are dedicated to helping devotees advance in Krishna consciousness. And if marriage will do that for you, go ahead, fantastic. If staying celibate is going to do it for you, then please do so. Because then you can dedicate more of your energy towards the spiritual master's mission, towards Krishna consciousness. So that is a very deep point. Prabhupada is saying here, In such activities, when there is necessity, we get them married also. So Prabhupada is saying this is for the purpose of them advancing in Krishna consciousness. So there's a third point that comes up here, which we will continue tomorrow. It's a very interesting question and a very deep practical question. But I hope we covered this aspect of marriage a bit and give you a little more insight onto the seriousness of it as a commitment and the dedication of your life to the practice of Krishna Consciousness within that ashram. So I hope you have a good day today. Please join us again tomorrow. Hare Krishna.